he had been extremely sick for two, three years and almost died several times. And Solana was the person who helped take care of him. That's my mom, and she's talking about Silvano, the last lover of my late uncle, Mark Loewinger. Mark was my dad's brother, and I was named after him. But I barely knew anything about the guy, except that he died of AIDS a few years before I was born. So I think that is very hard to ever let go of. And I saw this firsthand when I had a chance to visit Silvano in Paris. I was there on a school trip, and I went as a favor to my dad. I think he knew that it would be intense, and I record this visit for him to listen to later on, not for this radio story. So I arrive at his apartment, and Silvano begins showing me around. It's clear he lives alone. We start the tour with the record collection in his bedroom. A large portion of these belong to Mark, he says. I have uh, sometimes the same records twice, twice because yeah. Mark... I had the same record. I have the same record. And when we meet together... Yeah, As you can tell, his English is not perfect, and I don't speak French, so we do our best to feel out the conversation. Actually, he and Mark spoke Italian together. They had met in Rome, and they'd lived there for four years, up until my uncle passed away. I'd love, I'd love to hear your system. <laughs> ah, you... Be careful. <laughs> so... Nice. Anyway, he puts on a CD and we moved into his living room. We walked by a library of Mark's books and some beautiful old radios, the kind that fold out and light up with a burnt neon color. I love the radio. <laughs> These had also belonged to my uncle. We passed by some psychedelic paintings on the wall, which Mark had done himself. Mark. These are his? He did this? He did this. Wow, he's very talented. Looking at them, I could tell Mark had been bubbly, wow. like yet disciplined, family. maybe even a little obsessive. I had expected to learn a lot about Mark, but Silvano's apartment felt kind of like a shrine. Um, this is a painting of Mark. Mm, that? You haven't opened it? No. Oh, okay. In, in the, he brings uh, over a bubble wrap package. It's a series of eight paintings, he tells me. They're supposed to go side by side in a row. Silvano hasn't unpacked these since he moved them from Rome 15 years ago. Um, now it's time to... To offer you something of, of Mark. Wow, okay. <laughs> 20 years uh, ago, uh, twen uh, 25 years ago, uh, I, 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 I can't separate yeah. of Mark things. I, I don't blame uh, you. Uh, today, um, bon, it, uh, I think it's... Yeah, that painting have to uh, have a new life. Wow! With with you well, and your brother. Wow! So it will this made me feel pretty surprise. important. I'm about to transport these priceless family artifacts across the Atlantic for my dad, and he is going to be so thankful. You know, I could picture him in tears. So Silvano tells me these were painted in Rome in 1975, about a decade before they met. Mark had just come out as gay and divorced his wife, Margaret. The paintings were inspired by the quartets and quintets of Franz Schubert, the Austrian composer. I later came across the original sketches of these paintings. On graph paper, Mark had meticulously mapped out the Schubert pieces using colors, straight lines, and curves to depict the variations on each theme. His years as an architect clearly influenced his style here. But even with these detailed notes, the whole process seems pretty cryptic. Back home in D.C., I'm really excited to open up this package of paintings with my dad. Can somebody hold this here? He begins cutting away the bubble wrap. Okay, there we go. And the room feels completely still as he pulls out the works one by one. Okay, so this is called Rome 12. Rome, 1975, Mark Lowinger. This is called Rome 11. Rome, 1975, December, yeah, Mark This Lohinger. is Rome 10, also December. Okay. So this is called Rome 12. Rome, 1975, Mark Lowinger. 14, December. This is called Rome 13. This is Rome 7. This is Rome 8. And this is Rome, it's ripped, unfortunately, Rome 9. There you go. That's... That's them. Can you, can you describe them a little bit? Well, they're all different colors. 
and um, they're very kind of geometric, I guess, in a way. Feel like you're kind of flying. That's the way I look, look at it. Honestly, I was a bit disappointed by my dad's reaction. I mean, I know he still misses Mark, but I guess it's just been a really long time. And then I remembered what Silvano had said to me. That's painting have to uh, have a new life. Wow. With, with you well, and your brother. Silvano had shared these paintings so that I could appreciate the genius of my Uncle Mark. And all along, my enthusiasm hadn't just been about pleasing my dad. I really admire Mark, and I was touched by Silvano's love for him 25 years later. And there's something else, too. You know, Mark had been an architect slash artist while his brothers went into law. And I'm a radio guy with two scientist brothers. So I actually feel a lot better about being the odd one out, knowing that it's been done before to such great effect. And these paintings, even though the colors have worn a bit, and even though I don't quite understand their relationship to Schubert, these paintings sum up all those feelings pretty succinctly. And they'll continue to bear this story when they hang in my own home many years from now. For NYU Radio Reporting, I'm Michael Lohinger.